Hello everyone, this is going to be episode 3 of building a Grandmaster level framework. Today we're going to build a first counter module and we're going to use that to track the duration our sniper is um, aiming. So the sniper duration of aiming is 3 seconds and our AI gets evaluated four times a second so a tick happens four times a second so we need to count to 12 but before we can count to 12 we first need to figure out when a tick happened and to do that a user by the name of Gilbereke sorry if I mispronounced that came up with a very neat solution and let's just watch it in action so um, over here you can see tag A on our ally base is being set and reset every tick. So uh, yeah, let's dive into it. How, let's have a look at how that works. So over here I added uh, conditions for bot type and if myself sniper, we come in here. So, um, on the first tick of the game, this is what happens. We first check this condition. If that tag A exists, then we do some stuff. But at the beginning of the game, this is not active. So we just skip right over and go into this always true condition. And this connects to our tag A node node. So on our first tick we tag our base A. Simple enough. On the second tick however we need to remove that tag. And to do that we first check if that tag is there already. This time it is true. Then we perform this action which is grayed out because we tag A and a base that is already tagged A and then we remove the tag again instantly. After that execution proceeds down the tree to our always true condition. And now here's the tricky bit. Normally this node would get evaluated, right? And we would tag the base A again, achieving nothing. However, because we came here earlier, we evaluated this node during the execution of the code earlier, it doesn't get triggered again. So this is why we're left with a base untagged. Really clever way of uh, toggling a latch, uh, to toggling a tag without using an extra tag. Uh, we're going to use this to build a binary counter. So you can picture our tag A as our least significant bit. And let's add in another bit, and we'll call it B. So let's copy over our actions uh, we're going to perform. Now we need to figure out when do we perform these actions. And so let's write this down. Right, we got our bits B and A. We start the game with both of them being zero. Um, after that, tag A gets toggled, which it does every tick. Tag B should remain the same. On the next tick, however, we want to achieve this state. Tag A will get toggled, nothing to do here. Tag B, we need to set. So, um, we can do that with the condition over here which we already have if if the tag A exists we tag the base B and we'll remove tag A fair enough um, next tick this is the state of the, our binary counter you get nothing to do here since tag A will toggle automatically and then next step to 
complete a circle is uh, we're going to come here. Tag A, already accounted for. Tag B, we need to reset. And to do that, we need to check if the previous state is this one. So for this we need a new condition. So um, we're gonna check if there's a base tag A and B. And if that base exists, then we remove the tag. Now if we leave it this way, code is gonna proceed down the line and see that tag A is set as well. And it's gonna tag the base B again, even though we just untagged it. But to prevent that, we're going to use the same trick we used over here as well. We're going to pre evaluate this node, and it's not ex going to execute a second time. So, um, we just build a 2 bit binary count, and we can now count up to 4, as you can see. Okay, cool. So, um, we want to count up to 12 though. For that, we're going to need two more tags. Tag C and D. And I've made this already over here. And I'll count to mark two. Um, I'm just going to swap that in. Over here, like this. So, um, let's see what this looks like. So, this is the same setup we've just had. And those are the additional nodes that you need to extend the counter to 4 bit. And alright, so what we're going to do here is we want to only count when we're shooting an enemy, right? So this is why all of this is only going to get executed once we're shooting an enemy. And if we're not, we're gonna reset all of the tags. So once we start shooting it, an enemy, we're gonna start out with the tags being set to zero 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 zero. Um, so this is gonna count to sixteen. All we need is twelve ticks, so we need to reset early actually. So let's check for that. If there's an ally base that is not team tagged E. And tag C and D, which represents 12 in binary, then we're going to form our reset as well. Alright, so let's watch this in action. No tags are set right now. We're going to move into range, start shooting, and start counting as you can see. And what's a shot gets taken? the counter gets reset. Cool, so this works, but there's one additional case where we need to reset the counter. And that is when the sniper changes targets in between a shot. So right here, it started aiming. Um, but it's going to change targets. So at this point, the counter should have reset as the aiming time has reset. To do that, we need to track what enemy we're shooting. And we're going to do that using a tag. And I prefer to use a public, track, uh, public tag here because I want to have my allies know what the sniper is shooting at. So um, let's come into our tag module. I've already pre prepared this. so. If I'm sniper, then I'm gonna untag all enemies and I'm gonna tag the enemies that I'm shooting at. So, this is the information that we need to figure out if we've changed targets or not. It's so coming back into our counter. Um, so, even though I am shooting at an enemy, I might be shooting at an enemy that I wasn't shooting before. Uh, so we're going to check this in here. If the enemy that I'm shooting at is not 
team tag E, we know that we've just switched targets because our tagging module gets evaluated after a counter module. Um, it hasn't updated yet, so tag E is still set on the previous target, and now I'm shooting something else, which means we, I can now perform the reset. So, um, there we go, we've tagged the enemy. slow this down and see what's going on in here right so we just switch targets and the switch it happened after the count evaluation so it hasn't propagated to here yet so we need to wait for the next tick. And oh no, it didn't work. Um so what's up with that? Ah, oh, it says attacking me. Yeah, I clicked the wrong one. Attacked by me. So we switch targets, We're waiting for the next tick. There we go, we figured out we're shooting someone else now. We reset the tag and we start counting from new, which is why we're at binary one here. Alright, um, so we've got all of this set up and we're gonna get to using it in the next episode. Um, one last thing I wanna leave you guys with us. Uh, our updated tag list over here um, we got our four tags being used for the ally sniper aiming and we're using tag E for the enemy that is attacked by the sniper so that's it and next time we actually use our counter see you then